we had a guy, we had the uh, Keller Williams convention in Vegas last week. I brought in one of the top three environmental insurance guys in the world. Incredible. He looked into the mic and he said, folks, climate change is real. You can argue about what's starting it. But he said, the hotter places are hotter, the drier places are drier, the colder places are colder. And he said, when you look at the fact that USAA, one of the largest insurance companies in the world, who everybody knows, lost money for the first time last year. Why? Well, the insurance business is pretty simple. You have to take in more money than you pay out. And with the climate changes that have occurred, it's caught these insurance companies in a complete lurch. Add the fact that the supply chain screwed up everything in terms of what you have to buy to fix things, and they're in a bind. So that's what's driving some of these costs with, in, with insurance today. Interesting, too, he said, you know when they discovered that carbon dioxide uh, creates a hotter temperature, and we all went, uh, no, when? He said, 1890. He said a guy took two Petri dishes, and one he had oxygen, the other he put carbon dioxide, stuck a thermometer in it, and stuck it outside and measured it. And the one the carbon dioxide was 5% hotter. Interesting. So with that, Nick, get us up to speed on what's happening that you see that's new. Yeah, uh, we're seeing it, obviously, it, uh, many distressed situations across a multifamily, specifically in our neck of the woods in the New York City metropolitan area. It's a combination of higher interest rates, uh, different policies from the local government, um, many factors uh, affecting these properties. So. We're seeing creative arrangements where we come in as rescue capital uh, in the form of pref equity. It could be debt. It can be a combination. We've done stuff where we are in, you know, DIP financing, debtor possession in the bankruptcy courts, where we can help them out on the reorganization of the assets. We get a preferential rate when it comes out of bankruptcy. Uh, I think right now is, is a tremendous opportunity. I'm going to echo one of, you know, one of my panelists is that you're seeing real estate being sold, and it's not just office that's really grabbing the headlines. Um, you're seeing stuff in the Bay Area in office 70% off, New York 60% off. That's It's not just that. You're seeing multifamily where people need to actually live, uh, need a, a extra capital to get across the finish line, and you're seeing tremendous discounts and basis on participating in some of these um, projects. And I think, it, you know, it's, it's hard to time the bottom, but you're getting... <laughs> properties right now that you can build your way below terminal value. And I think that's where that's what it's, it's been our focus. And uh, we're seeing more deal flow because of that. And you can get really creative on the finance. Side. You can get creative on entering these positions uh, in a, in a different way. We've done deals where we come in as, you know, the main co GP partner, even after they've almost 80% finished, we've come in as an, uh, as a debt finance, we even come in where, the deed is in escrow and until it's refied. So you can get super creative if you have the flexibility, creativity, and the capital to participate on some of these deals right now that are being completely marked down. And uh, it's, it's just a very interesting environment. Nick, can you talk a little bit about office conversions in New York? Spend a couple of minutes. Tell us what you see. It's not as easy as everyone thinks. It's a very difficult endeavor. Um, the adaptive reuse of offices is, you know, a hot topic now. And a lot of the B and C office space is just more than not than really makes sense. Uh, some of the class A office space where you have 30, you know, windows in almost next to impossible to convert. So it has to be the right floor plate. It has to be the right area. And it, you need obviously the government officials to work side by side. New York, thank God, has a, right now, the mayor that is really pushing this, but it's not so easy, and only a few of these properties will happen. Um, I think there's, I mean, we, we, we talked to one gentleman that is an expert of this, he's been doing this since 91, he says that pass maybe on 50 deals, I'll take one, because they just have to make sense, and it's better just to knock them down. Um, we're seeing interesting different possibilities, buildings that are being auctioned off or being taken out. You've got really longer term capital. We were talking to a family office. They're looking at this as a 20 year investment, not a five year. 
where the you know they rejigger the the office building as vertical farming as a ver storage different scenarios that can fit because your basis is so low but you have to really think of the longer term it's not just it, it's not just multifamily yeah okay quick survey everybody raise your hands if in the last 70 days you asked some of your people to come back to the office of course, I can't see anything because we've got these lights. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, interesting. Office Flex is out there. I'm, my comment is I think it's two years before everybody figures out how to actually make this work. Because they're sending some people home that don't need to be home. I thought it was interesting that Zoom asked all of its employees to come back. <laughs> so, Alice, get us up to speed retail. Sure. So, we... Finally, have a little bit of sunshine in our market. I mean, vacancy rates are the lowest they've ever been across for the last 20 years. We're talking about vacancy rates of 4% in our shopping centers. Um, and the reason being is that everybody thought that retail would go away. Well, that was a big lie. Even though you buy it from Amazon, where do you return it? Return it to Whole Foods. You know, where do you, it's, we're the last mile delivery for almost everything. If you don't have anybody at your house, you go pick up at Whole Foods or wherever. Um, when you keep seeing like Bed Bath & Beyond going out or all the various retailers going out, we're finding new uses for those boxes and filling them up just as quickly as they empty. I mean, you now see like pickleball in former Bed Bath & Beyonds. I mean, there is a pickleball in Stamford, Connecticut that was a former Saks Fifth Avenue. Yeah, hey, hey Alice, hold on. Okay, how many of y'all are playing pickleball? <laughs> um, so we're actually seeing some uh, a little good bit of light. The only problem we really are seeing is there's a big disconnect between buyers and sellers still. People don't really are coming to the table. They're doing a lot of whisper numbers before they're, they're trying to do a bunch of pre-marketing, like what will you give us for that? And then they're falling away or hiding. Or we'll get people get all the way down the launch for the thing and then suddenly the bank will say, well, now we're only going to give you 50% equity on that. So now the price, we can't pay that price. So there's to make our numbers. So there's a lot of disconnect going on in the marketplace. So it's been a very slow deal flow area. Deals just aren't getting done. I think people were asleep for the fourth quarter and they're just starting to wake up now. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. George, tell us what's going on in banking. What do you think is going to happen? Real estate there. Oh, Brian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, George. I mean, it just he's such a handsome guy. Oh, that's true. Basically, so to kind of to kind of springboard on what a um, couple a couple others have mentioned is there there are going to be distressed properties, and um, I, and one thing I want to emphasize here in this room, man, I mentioned to the folks that asked me to join this panel is like, listen, I'm very much a Main Street investor. I you know I don't have these you know big funds and family offices, and you know I have dozens of dozens of units, you know, maybe a couple hundred, but it's not astronomical. And, um, but what I wanted to emphasize is debt is, uh, and I speak it as you know, both an investor and as a lender, debt is powerful. Um, it has a power to uh, make you very, very wealthy, but also has a power to destroy you. And, and I have always taken a posture of if using as much debt as I possibly can, as long as I'm safe. Um, we've, saw, we've seen too long, and there is going to be a day where a lot of these in the next two or three years, where there's going to be this, this turn of distressed properties because banks underwrote to the very minimum standard and borrowers use their properties as piggy banks. And, um, and you know, you're, you're underwriting to very low rates, very low debt yields, very low debt service coverages. And what has happened? Expenses have shot up astronomically. Um, vacancies in some some areas, I mean, my areas is still pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, big too, very low. But, um, and, and rents have come down as well in some areas. And so you're seeing that compression where the, once a loan ring is, they can no longer afford it. And so those properties are going to go back to the bank. They're going to, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it can be a mess for, for individuals. And that's who I really want to speak to is the individuals. I'm not talking about big funds or the, but individuals use debt wisely. Um, it can, like I said, it can really make or break you. And, um, 
uh, I've used it and I still do. Uh, but I always think about the what ifs, you know, what if my, what if my, you know, my, uh, you know, my vacancy goes up or my rental rates go down or what if as of right now, I have a couple of phones that are going to be renewing, the rates are going to go up. And so I built in tolerances for myself where I know that I could keep my asset in the long run if any big things happen. So. Yeah, the thing I would tell the audience, just, you know, 50 years of real estate standing here at the podium and hundreds of years here, real estate's all local, so make sure you have local people who really understand those values and things. Human nature never changes, which is your point that you made, uh, Brian, and that is that people tend to lever up when they probably should not. But I will also tell you, it is, as George pointed out, it's a limited commodity, and the beauty of real estate is you can learn the indices that drive it. When someone asked me, is Tesla stock worth it, what it is? I really can't tell you. I put crypto in the same category because it's, it's only worth what all of you think that crypto's worth. Real estate, on the other hand, is measurable. I can go check the jobs. I can check supply and demand. I can check where the utilities are. I can check the schools. I can check the communities. I may have to go get an expert to tell me what I'm reading, but the information's out there. And incredibly, we're on time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Joe.